Hello, this is Dr. Jack Myers. Welcome to Jack Myers Ministries and Life Family Church Podcast Channel. Be blessed by this message. This, this evening about seven biblical steps to overcoming adversity. Anybody had some challenges in the last few weeks? Can I see your hand? If you didn't lift your hand, maybe we should trade places, praise God, and let you <laughs> preach the sermon. Praise. How many had some adversity in the last week or so? All right, we're going to give you seven steps on how to overcome adversity. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. It says this, We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Number one, how to overcome adversity. Number one. Prayer and seeking God. It's your prayer life. Prayer is a powerful tool to seek God's guidance and comfort. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says this, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and minds through Jesus Christ. So the real key thing is this, and I, I think I said this at the beginning of the year, you should ask the Lord on everything. If you're remodeling your house, ask the Lord, should we do it? Ask the Lord when the timing is. We're going on missions. Lord, Ask the Lord, should I go on this mission trip or the next mission trip? Lord, shall I be a part of that? Should I buy that? Should I get rid of that? Ask the Lord. Talk to him. Now, when it comes to the minor things, you know, you don't want to go to your closet and say, Lord, show me which piece of clothing I should wear today. You don't need to ask the Lord about that. Or ladies, when you go grow, go shopping at the stores, you know, at Belk's or whatever you go, J.C. Penney's, like, Lord, should I buy this one or should I buy? No, no, no. He just leaves that up to you. But when it comes to major purchases, when it comes to major decisions, you should always seek the Lord, especially if it's going to cost you a lot of money. Because God knows everything. He knows exactly how people are today and how they're not today. In Romans eight fourteen, it says this, For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. So God wants to lead you in these decisions in life. And believe me, if you're led by the Spirit of God, you'll avoid a lot of pitfalls. God will tell you ahead of time. But you have to have your spiritual antenna in tune to to, to the wavelength of his voice. It's so important to, to get to know the voice of God. And the best way I know to get to know the voice of God is by reading his word. Because his word is his voice. And that's the and that's how you start. There are actually seven different ways that God leads you. The first way that God leads you is through his word. How many times the Lord may have led you to a scripture to encourage you? Isn't that right? The second way that God leads you is what we call the inward witness. In the book of Proverbs, it talks about your spirit is the candle of the Lord searching the inward parts of the belly. So you want to go on the inside. You want to look on the inside. Basically, when you're about to make a decision, do you have a red light? Do you have a yellow light? Or do you have a green light? Brother Hagin talked about a velvety feeling. Come on, hello, somebody. We may not know all the circumstances and everything that we're dealing with, and even in the future, but God knows because he's all-knowing. But here's the good news. He lives on the inside of you. Get to know him. Get to know the God on the inside of you. We know the God of the universe according to but get to know the God on the inside of you because he lives on the inside of you. John the Baptist talked about it. He must increase. We must decrease. The hardest death you'll ever die is to yourself. It is. That's the hardest death you'll ever die. You have to die daily to yourself. And you'll go through some certain tests in your life to see how dead you are. Just remember, you need to be a walking dead man. Dead to opposition. Dead to adversity. Dead to people talking about you. Dead, 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 dead. (laughs) Just got to be dead to yourself. One of the things that's helped me is when we get adversity, and we do go through adversity, or other people doing things to you, and you just got to remember what Jesus said on the cross. Why did he say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. You have to remember, they're the one that has the problem. You don't. Because you're walking in love, and love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers. Love understands. Love understood Judas's decision, even though it hurt the Lord Jesus. Come on, he understood that. Love covers. And the the real key thing is, is if if you learn to be self-correcting, then God doesn't have to correct you or your pastor doesn't have to correct you. Be self-correcting. And God gives you time. 
He's so merciful and he's so kind. He wants you to be self-correcting. But you can't say that you've been working on that one particular area of your life for 25 years and not change it. God's interested in change. Somebody say change. Say it again. Turn to your neighbor and say he's talking about you. He's talking about you. <laughs> change. You know, change can be very intimidating to people. Change can be very painful. Come on, but it's very beneficial. Come on, because change will either make you bitter or it'll make you better. Amen. Say, Lord, change me. Now, yeah, be careful what you ask for because you may have to go through some adversity to actually see if the change has taken place. I was recently tested in, a, in an area of my attitude when somebody was really close to me kind of hurt my feelings. And I'm like, okay, I have, a, I have a choice here. I can either just let that slide, okay, or I can just work it out of my heart. So I, I thought, okay, Lord, is this a test? I'm fine. I ask the Lord a lot. Is this a test? Are you testing me here? Are you testing if you can trust me more with more? Come on now. So people say this, well, you know, if I had a million dollars, I'd give it. Yeah, but they got $500 a week, and they didn't give the tithe. What do you, what do you mean you want a million dollars? And Oh, well, you know, I, God's promoted me. He's given me more money, but now I used to write tithe checks for $50 a week. And now it's $100 a week, and now it's, you know, it's gone to $200 a week, and now I get $5,000 a week, and now i got to write a $500. That's just too much money to give to the church. The most amazing thing, God's blessed them and increased them because they were tithing, and all of a sudden when the number gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're like, oh, that's just too much. It's amazing. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, for they are the sons of God. Prayer and seeking God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and watch this, and all these things will be added unto you. Now, when it comes to seeking the kingdom of God, you have to understand what the kingdom of God is to be able to seek it. Right? Matthew 6, 33, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which means right standing and, or God's ways of doing and being right, and then all these things. So seek ye first God's ways of doing and being right, then all these things will be added to you besides. So what does that mean? Seek them in your decisions. Should we do this? Should we not do this? Should we go this direction or not? Go to the direction. Seek ye first. What are we talking about? We're talking about overcoming adversity. I am working on that book. Stop shooting yourself in the foot. I have some chapters. That's, that's, that's a new book I'm, I'm coming out with. And I, I, I could tell when people shoot themselves in the foot. I mean, I just like, you can just tell of the outcomes. They just shot themselves in. Anybody in here ever shot yourself in the foot? I, I've tried to stop that. Praise God. Amen. It's, it's, just too, it's just too painful. You know? Number two, faith and trust in God. Trusting in God's plan, even when it's hard to see, is, cri is critical. It's crucial. Just because you don't know the entire plan of God, and even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't have to fear any evil. Come on. You're going through the shadow of the valley of death. Now, you're not in the valley of death. It's the shadow that you're going through, which is temporary. What are we talking about? We're talking about overcoming adversity. So number one, prayer and seeking God. Number two, faith and trusting God. Trusting in God's plan, even when it's hard to see, is, is crucial. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, watch this, and lean not on thy own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. And the path that you may on that may not look like it makes sense. Why do you have me in this job? It really sucks. Why do you have me in this job? It really, because God wants to do something deep within you, Jen Sneed. He wants to do something deep within you. He's using your job as a roto rooter to get Jen Sneed out of the way. He's using your job, Josh, to get the roto rooter of what's on the inside of you out of the way. That's what, that's what he does. That's how he does it. Dr. Jackie, you're prophesying. No, I know there are situations a little bit. 
Is that, yeah, right? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. So how do you overcome adversity? You're, you're feeling this adverse effect. Well, prayer, seeking God, yeah. right? Faith and trusting God that he knows that he has the plan for you. Instead of asking, why am I still in the same position? You need to say, Lord, what do you want me to change? What is it about me that you want to change in me to make me a better me? What is it about me that you want to change in me so I can be a better me? Life is about perspective. It's all about perspective and people's perspective. Like we were, you know, we were, we were getting prices and getting things to get our pool redone because our pool needs to be redone. And then uh, we had some leaks in it. And so a guy came out and he said, well, well we, can, we can do, we can fix the leaks and all that kind of stuff for $2,500. And he's just one of the jets in the, in the hot tub, $2,500. About fell out under the power. So the guy comes and he fixes one of the jets and come to find out another jet went out. That's another $2,500. And I'm thinking, what is that? Okay, no thank you. So I dug up underneath myself and I looked at all the plumbing. It's just PVC. And it goes into the concreted hot tub with all the, you know, mark site and all that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking... These people want to charge me $2,500 per port. You've gone insane. And by the way, it's, and it's $500 just to find the leak in the pool. So I, I, I called the guy that recommended the, you know, it was, that was kind of putting together our pool stuff, you know, the tile and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, you know, you sent me this guy. He spent 30 minutes, I wrote him a check for $500, said the leak was here. He came out, drained the hot tub, had his guys fix the leak, fix the thing, and it's still leaking. And he wants to charge me another $2,500 because he missed the first thing. So I'm like $3,000 already in it. I'm like, there's something wrong here. So I, so he comes over, and, and I tell him all this, and, and, and this guy recommended him. He's supposed to be the best. He's supposed to be the best guy. And then this is what he said to me. He said, you have now become dangerous because you know too much. I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to do your pool deck. I thought to myself, you're dangerous because you're a con artist and you like ripping people off in the pool industry. So I had an, hour, an opportunity to get my heart right. I could have called him Skippy, but I didn't. <laughs> and lately, well, praise the Lord. I, well, praise God, I ain't going to say it. All right, praise God. And let's say, let me say this. Idle words out of my mouth, God's been correcting me on. Praise God. Amen. Because I don't want an entire book, for my, entire, my entire 58 years on this earth. Of all the idle words that I've spoken. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll be honest because I just, I'm just honest, you know. Sometimes you just, listen, I love the female race. It's wonderful. But sometimes you, they can just be like Princess Diana and Princess Buttercup. So lately I've been calling Karen's Princess Buttercup, who've been invading my life. Well, you can't come in here and clean this carpet. Okay, Princess Buttercup, get your royal highness out of the office. Why y'all looking at me like that? Because you do the same thing. Oh, can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Can we get some honesty tonight? <laughs> Princess Buttercup. And one lady goes, oh, it's you again. I was like, okay, Princess Buttercup. No wonder you don't have a Prince Albert. All right, praise God. <laughs> At least I didn't cuss. I didn't cuss. I didn't say. I didn't even think about it. I'm just. I'm on the Princess Buttercup and Prince Di Princess Diana thing. And the Lord did. He said, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, well, "Come on, Lord." You. He's like, "I'm writing this stuff down." Oh, please forgive me, God. Please forgive me for every idle word spoken. I've, I've gotten into a bad habit. It started with lows. 
minding my own business in Lowe's, two lines, one line's really long with the person at the checkout, and the self-checkout was easy, was empty. I round the corner, right? There's nobody there. Suddenly a lady walks by. There was a line, you know. And I'm like, what? There was a line. I almost said it. Okay, Princess Buttercup. But I didn't. I thought it, but I didn't say that. I, was, I restrained myself. I said, excuse me, ma'am. There, the line, there's one line here, and this was empty. And I said, I didn't stop you. You're at that self-checkout. I said, she said, well, some of us just need to pay attention. I said, I think that is with all of us. Yeah. See the line? <laughs> it's the personality. Some of you don't say anything, but you sure think it. I'm so happy I'm in a room full of angels. I'm just telling, I'm just telling you right now. Your halos are glistening and your wings are creating a breeze up here. Faith and trust in God. In Matthew 6, 33 34, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of the things of itself sufficient unto the day. So remember, just deal with what you have to deal today. You know, don't be concerned about next week, the following, the following. Isn't it enough today? Okay, but I'm not saying that you shouldn't think ahead because prior proper planning produces positive results. You should think about the future in some things. All right, so number one, prayer and seeking God. Number two, faith and trust in God, even when you, it's hard to see what, where God's leading you. Number three, reading and meditating on Scripture. You have to put the Word in you. You have to. And not only that, you have to be a doer of it. It's, it's getting to that point in, in our society. You have to do the word and you have to put it in you and you have to act on the word. You have to be self-disciplined. The Bible offers wisdom and encouragement. Joshua 1.8, the book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night and thou mayest observe to do. So it's not just putting, this, I got a sermon in there, stick it in your ear, but you also need to do it. We have to start printing practical application. To our lives, instead of reacting to circumstances when things get really hard, we need to respond with the Word of God. You have to use the Word of God, which is very imperative for your success. For then shall thou may be prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. That's Joshua 1.8. Psalms 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto thy path. So whatever circumstances you're facing, whether it's physically, emotionally, financially, use the Word. Amen. Say the Word. Walk out the word. Don't, re, don't, don't react to the way people are doing or reacting to your bills or reacting to what people are doing or not doing for you. No, respond with the word. And check yourself because I got good news. Over the next few weeks, you'll have some opportunities and adversity. Praise God. Amen. From people. People are going to come across your path. They're going to say hurtful things. They're going to do hurtful things. And you have an opportunity. Just forgive them and, or use the word. You have to use it. It's a sword that God's given you. Use the word. Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the body of soul and spirit and joints of marrow is the discerner in the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So in other words, when you're in a situation, like, you know, when you're having a ch challenge, challenge with your car, a challenge with your equipment, a challenge that you're facing because somebody else dropped the ball and they put it on you. You have an opportunity. Complain, murmur, or I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praise. Because the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So there was a situation that was happening with them when a piece of my equipment. And I couldn't get it started. And I'm thinking, man, what's going on? So I rearranged the fuel filter and uh, the fuel pump with, a, with a, my machine because it was feed, feeding too much fuel to the carburetor. So I had to make an adjustment. And I couldn't get it started, couldn't get it started. So I'm like, Lord, instead of complaining why this can't, I sing praises to your name. And I was like, Lord, what do I need to do? Suddenly it just dropped on me. Drain the carburetor, let it set for a little bit, and readjust the shutoff valve. 
so that when the fuel filter is activated, it's not pouring fuel into the carburetor and, and flooding it. Guess what happened? Now I learned something. So I've, and so all day yesterday, the machine worked great. Didn't have any problems. I mean, I didn't have to crank it and crank it and crank it and crank it. I just made a little bit of adjustment because God knows everything. So instead of complaining and getting all frustrated and mad in the pouring rain, you should sing. Well, I'm singing in the rain. I, got, I think I got a sermon out there called Singing in the Rain. Gee, I wish we have everybody go out to the resource center. Every answer to every problem that you'll ever have. Don't even call Pastor Marina for counseling because we're going to send you to the resource of the source of all. Get the podcast and listen to it. We, we have, we, listen, we have an answer to everything. We've been doing this church for 15 years. My God. Been in the ministry for 28. Pastor, we need to meet with you over our finances. There's a whole book. Stewardship's in there. Get the book. Do what I have to do. And then apply it. We supply everything. <laughs> Our counseling is like this. Did you get that book? No. Did you read this book? No. Did you listen to that podcast? No. You got that podcast? No. Here, listen to that podcast. That's, that's our counseling from now on. Get the podcast. Go down the list. You'll see every answer to every problem. Marital problems. Relational problems. Job problems. Boss problems. People problems. Have an answer for everything. Help yourself. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study the show that's self-approved unto God. I work with that need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of God. What are we talking about? Reading and meditating on scripture. Just don't read the Bible just to read the Bible. You need to slow down. I mean, a one-year Bible is great. I'm I'm not knocking that. But sometimes, I mean, I'll read five chapters. Or I'll read one chapter. I'll read five verses. Or I'll read one. And then I meditate on that verse all day long because it really ministered to me. Sometimes I'll read a half a chapter. Sometimes I'll, I, 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 I kind of mix it up a little bit. And then I listen to the word, like healing scriptures. When I'm driving around, I'll listen to the word. Or then I switch it up and I do listen to praise and worship. Stick it in your ear. It's called renewing your mind. You're applying the word of God so that when adverse times come, and here's good news, they're going to come. Isn't that wonderful? Aren't you happy about that? He said in this life, you'll have trials and tribulations. But what did he say? Be of good cheer. If I've overcome, you too can overcome. So you can't say, I can't stand this anymore. It's a test. It's a test. I'm telling you. Listen, God doesn't tempt with evil, but he will test your faith. And how he tests your faith is when adversity comes. How do you respond or how do you react? How do you respond or how do you act? Listen, sometimes God will allow people to come in your life to really test your love walk. He will allow that person in your life to actually even rip you off to see how you're going to respond. Are you going to respond in anger? Maybe you get angry. Listen, Bible says, be angry and sin not. Hello? But how are you going to respond? There's just one person that was in my life. They're no longer in my life because you don't have to stand for abuse. Hello, we're Christians, not victims. Hello? Listen, you, you don't have to like everybody, but you do have to love everybody. And you don't have to hang around everybody either. Especially if they, of all they, the leech says, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. You don't have to hang around leeches. Love you from a distance. Praise God. I love you from a distance. Especially if all, all they ever do is just take from you. Come on, hello somebody. Yeah, just take, take, take. Slander, slander, slander. Take, take, take. Slander, slander, slander. And eventually, you don't have to have that person in your life, but you learned how to be patient with them, kind to them, loving to them regardless. As a matter of fact, when you're loving and kind to a person who's absolutely cruel to you, you actually heap coals upon their head. And that word coals means the anointing. 
adversity. What you're facing, reading and meditating the scripture. Number four, community and support. Leaning on fellow believers for support and encouragement is vital. And what happened four years ago? Had COVID hit. Split the church right down the middle. Everybody's six feet apart. Got to wear these masks that didn't do a thing. There are still stores that have the stickers on the floor six feet apart. There are still people today driving in their car by themselves with masks on. Yeah. <sighs> what happened? I got into an accident. What happened? I don't know. I had my mask on in my car and I passed out, officer. I don't know. I don't know how I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Anybody see anybody driving with masks on in their car? There's people still coming to church with masks on. They must be true believers. <laughs> That's serious. True believers. Something, something, something didn't click up here. I mean, I'm serious. There's, what have you been meditating on? What have you been watching? That you're still... After four years wearing a mask while you're driving your car. Yeah. Sound like Darth Vader. <laughs> Here, listen, let me show you how ridiculous this is. We're in, we're in North Carolina in the airport, me and Matt, right? And the attendant walks up and she's got this cloth mask. Can you hear me? Can you hear? <gasps> can, you, can everybody hear me? Well, we could if you removed the face diaper, praise God. Amen. Okay. Uh oh, forgive me. See, I'm just a little, little tired. And, but it's true. Come on. Like, can you hear? She said that four times. Can you hear me? Everybody, everybody was like, yeah, we can hear you. Take off the mask. <laughs> you know what that does? It erases brain cells because of oxygen deprivation. <laughs> Can you hear me? I should have shouted. We could if you take the mask off. I mean, there's like, there's like 800 people packed at the end of the airport trying to get on flights. Can you hear <laughs> me? Okay, pastor, move on. Praise God, amen. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 says this, not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together as the many of many are, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. I don't know if people are really getting that. It's just not quite that bad out there yet. Yet. But yet is coming. We've all been warned. Yet is coming. Acts 2, 44 through 47 says this, and all that believed were together. Acts 2, 44. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and good and parted them as the, every man had need. And they continuing daily in one accord in the temple. Breaking of bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily as should be saved. That sounds like we should be together. The apostle Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart a spiritual blessing. It's wonderful. Live stream is a wonderful thing. But if you're like five miles and you're in your pajamas and you can actually get up and come to church, you need to gather together. Why? Because we need to be together. We're better together. Leaning on fellow believers for support, especially when you're going through adversity. Satan loves to pick off the weak sheep. Come on now. When the sheep are all together, it's hard to pick it off because the other sheep will defend. But if one bat is out by himself, little lamb by himself, that tiger going to get it. And the Bible says Satan goes around like a roaring lion. So his whole goal is to attack the person's weakness 
get them to be single-minded instead of multiple-minded, and suddenly, woe is me, so that depression could come in and situation could come in. Nobody, and then begins to lie. Nobody cares about you. Nobody loves you. Those are all lies. Oh, yeah. You know, you're a loner anyway. You've always been a loner. And then suddenly, you don't see them any longer. They fall out, and suddenly, the Satan's like, I got them. I got them. And suddenly, their life, they begin to die. Spiritually first. And then ultimately physically. Because they decided to pull themselves out of the sheepfold and be all alone out here. Number five, perseverance and patience. Perseverance and patience. Perseverance and patience. I think I have a sermon out there. I will not be defeated and I will not quit. What are we talking about? How to overcome adversity. Perseverance and patience. Adversity often requires patience and perseverance. James 1, 2 and 4 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or adversity, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and tired, wanting nothing. Why? Because if you be patient in the situation, that which you desire in your heart will come to pass. It'll eventually come to pass. But you've got to be patient, and you have to have perseverance. Patience and perseverance. You probably have to be patient in the situation right now. I know there's things in your heart. There's things in my heart. Like, I want the building paid off like yesterday and start on the women's restroom like tomorrow. Praise God. Amen. Because this, this Word and Spirit conference, this place is going to be packed out. I'm not, tell, I'm not exaggerating. It's going, we have people coming in from Virginia. Pastors are coming in. I mean, this place is going to be packed full. And we have a plan. We got a, we got a one, one, plan one, plan two, and plan three. Amen. Amen. We've, already, we've already even worked it all out. But it should be nice if we can just knock down that wall and put a brand new ladies' restroom in and sit about 225 people in here. But we'll just have to do that next year. Amen. And we're only down, we're down to $101,000. Yeah, we're going to break, we're going to break that 100000 Yeah. Amen. That's it. So, and then we're going to start in the women's restroom, in the women's restroom. Brand new, ladies. It'll be nice. Patience and perseverance. I will not be defeated. I will not quit. Don't let the circumstances defeat you. Come on. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on, you're the head and not the tail. You're above it. I mean, you're going over. You're not going under. Come on. The greater one lives on the inside of you. He's brought you this far, right? Has he ever failed you? No, he's not going to fail you now. Just persevere. Keep going. Keep going. Be better than the Energizer Bunny. Keep going. Just keep on going. Keep on going. Don't stop. Come on now, especially when you're faced with circumstances. I will not be defeated. I will not quit. All the finances are screaming. I will not be defeated. I will not quit. But my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. I don't care what it looks like. What did you say, Doc? It looks really bad. Those may be the facts, but the truth of God's word overrides the fact. By his stripes, I am healed. That I am, I always will be healed. God's word is true. Let everything be a liar in the name of Jesus Christ. So you got to work that word. Not just in here when you're in church. This is your preparation for out there. When you're faced with adversity out there, when you're faced with situations, and the, and the devil whispers in your ear, are you not going to make it? Are you not going to pass the test one more time? Got to take that test. You just, listen, I think, what is it? How many, how many times did Walt Disney get turned down for a loan for Walt Disney World? I mean, something like 100 or something, 100 something times. Right? He applied over and over. <laughs> All these banks are turning them down. No, you just keep on going. You persevere. You run your race. You finish your course for the high calling in Christ Jesus, right? All right, number six, praise and worship. The unta there is a message out on the resource center called the untapped power of praise. You need to get the podcast. Go get that. The untapped power of praise. You praise your way through your circumstances. You praise your way through your victory. Come on now. Hello. Worshiping God, even in tough times, helps shift focus from problems to his greatness. 
Let me say that again. That, that, that should be a Facebook quote. Worshiping God, even in tough times, helps shift from the problem to his greatness. Like I said, I got a problem with the machine. I'm wasting time here. I'm burning fuel. I'm burning daylight. It's costing me money. What do you do? I sing praises to your name. Right? I'm walking through, walking through the, the school. Oh, the blood of Jesus. I'm worshiping out loud so the devil can hear me and somebody else. Princess Buttercup can hear me. No, it was really funny because Matt and I, we, we, when we were up in Virginia doing meetings, we were walking through the Walmart parking and one guy just started cussing like crazy. So I went, I sing praises to, in the Walmart parking lot, I sing praises to your name. Man, they, listen, they'll drop the F-bomb, they'll cuss in front of you, they'll scream across the parking lot. Why can't you just loudly praise the Lord? Because if you don't do it, the rocks are going to cry out, and I'm not going to let no rock cry them out. I sing praises to your name. Hey, yeah, blankety, blank, 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 blank. Praise you, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. Listen, be, be, the world's bold. Be bold. Why are you crying? You're, come on now. You're as bold as a lion. Worship the Lord. Praise the Lord in public. Psalms 34 verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, <laughs> His praise shall continually be in my mouth. There's your verse, Jack. I will bless the Lord at what times? I will bless the Lord at what times? Come on, you help me out. I will bless the Lord at even when adversity comes, I will. When the victory comes, I will. When the bank account looks mighty low. When the bank account is mighty high. <laughs> I will bless the Lord at what? At what? At what? All Let me get my evangelistic voice. At what? All, All times. times. All times. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Negativity? No. Criticizing? No. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue. If you're constantly praising the Lord and blessing the Lord. You ain't got time to criticize. Amen. Because you're doing it all the time. Amen. You're praising all the time. Amen. If you remember anything in this message, just, I hope God brings this verse back to you. I will bless the Lord at all times. and Because it comes to me all the time when I get an attitude and I'm like, I don't want to do it. No, forget this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, right? That's Psalms 34, verse 1. Philippians 3, 13 to 14. Brethren, count it not myself to have apprehended this one thing, forgetting those things are which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ God Almighty. Pressing onward. Pressing onward. What are you talking about? We're talking about praise and worship. Your future, that's the reason why we say this. Your future is not in your past. Amen. Your future is forward. Amen. You're pressing forward, not in the past. The past is the past. You can't change it. But if you're not careful, that past will grip you. And it holds you in your present circumstances. No, you have to press forward. Stop being stubborn. Praise and worship. Number seven. Service and helping others. Helping others in need can bring perspective and joy to your need. Galatians 6.2, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. All right, so number one, prayer and seeking God. Number two, faith and trust in God. Number three, reading and meditating on scripture. Number four, community and support. That means coming to church and being together. Number five, perseverance and patience. Number six, praise and worship. Number seven, service and helping others. These are seven steps to overcome 
adversity. And I want to give my notes to you. You're welcome. And the rest of you can get the podcast. Praise God. Amen. (laughs) Thank you for joining us today. To learn more about the ministry and get additional resources, you can visit us at jackmyersministries.com and lifefamilychurch.net.